It is good to be back, brothers and sisters, fellow sons and daughters of our Blessed Virgin Mary. Again, let me remind each one that uh, whenever we gather like this, we pray. Because when the Blessed Mother is there, she invites us always to pray. And understand, prayer is simply being with God, believing that He's always there. He loves us. He cares for us. So let us acknowledge His presence. And we are speaking to Him together with Jesus, accompanied by our Blessed Mother. Let us pray the prayer that the, whole, the, the Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty Father, we thank you because you have given us your Son, Jesus, to be with us, through whom we can be always with you ever more deeply, particularly to, through the Eucharist, which he is. He is the Eucharist, your gift to us, and our gift together with us to you, which you, have to, you, you are forced to accept because... He is your son, and we are your sons and daughters through him. Thank you also for the Holy Mother, the proof that we are called by you to be your children. You invented the Holy Mother, your favorite daughter, spouse of the Holy Spirit, mother of your incarnate son. Thank you for her who always accompanies us and guides us. My dear brothers and sisters, in prayer, let us reflect now on Our Lady of Akita. Akita is in Japan. You know very well that Japan is a non-Catholic country, but the Catholics there are very serious, very devoted. And uh, Japan is loved by the Blessed Mother because Japan suffered a lot. Until now, it is suffering because in a sense, it has lost uh, its spirit and trying to find the real spirit. We must pray for the Japanese people and for all Asians also, particularly the Chinese people. They're so numerous and their influence is so great for better or for good, for better or for worse. And so we need to pray that uh, these great people will become uh, believers in Jesus and uh, according to the mind of St. John Paul II, Asia, they are Asia's come. When these great people, strong people, and we are, the Philippines are the instruments and we are the least of these people, but we are the instruments of God now for the evangelization of Asia. When these great, fierce, strong people, the Chinese and Japanese will convert, it will be great grace for the whole region where the, more than half of the world's population can be found. Anyway, uh, why Akita now? You know? Fatima, which uh, St. John Paul II said is probably the greatest religious event in our times, no? is related to, we have reflected on Our Lady of All Nations. It is connected with Fatima. And many other apparitions after, two, after 1917 uh, are always associated with Fatima. Akita is one of them. One of the things that we remember in Akita associated with Our Lady of Nations is the image itself that you see here in our before me. Now. The image is really the Our Lady of All Nations who appeared in Amsterdam to Ida Perdiman. And uh, you can see it. here it is a wooden statue in, in, in Akita. In uh, Amsterdam, it is a canvas. And uh, remember, when we were reflecting on uh, Our Lady of All Nations, we see the Blessed Mother. Behind her is the cross, which shows that she is so closely united to the saving work of Christ. That will appear again in Akita. And then what we do not see in the uh, wooden image of Akita, but we should always keep in mind because it is Our Lady of All Nations, Beneath the Blessed Mother is the world and all nations represented by the different sheep, lambs and sheep. That's why she is Lady of all nations. All nations represented by the big uh, animal, which is the sheep. 
are gathered under her reign, under her uh, motherhood. So Akita, without uh, at once knowing it, is associated with both Fatima and Amsterdam. That's why this uh, Uh, apparitions of the Blessed Mother, especially in our times, are very much linked with each other. Anyway, the main uh, character besides the Blessed Mother in Our Lady of Akita is Sister Agnes Susagawa. Sister Agnes was born in 1931. She was a Buddhist. All the whole family was Buddhist. It still is. The, many of the, the, the great majority of the Japanese people are Buddhist, Shintoists. No, they're not Christians. But there is an attraction for Christianity. Let us face it. No? Christianity is attracting the Japanese people. And they are a suffering people. The, I, I think it is imprinted on the mind of each Japanese person, whether they, are, they were born after the Second World War, the great tragedy of Nagasaki and Hiroshima You know, Nagasaki, there are so many Catholics there. Many, mart many were martyred in that area. And Hiroshima also, there is a miracle there of the Jesuit priests who were saved from the uh, great uh, tragedy uh, because they, their church no, and their community were faithful to the prayer of the rosary. And the rosary saved them. One of the proof of that uh, experienced by the missionaries in Japan and also by the Japanese people. I, I remember Lorenz Ruiz, already in the 18th or 17th century, he was martyred dead together with uh, several missionaries from Europe and local catechists. So they were several martyrs. They were all devotees of the Holy Rosary, thanks to the Dominican fathers whom he accompanied until uh, the ultimate sacrifice. Sister uh, Agnes Susagawa was was a Buddhist, but he was already a, she was already a grown-up person when she started to discover Christianity. And uh, after she was converted, already probably in her 30s, late 30s, she entered the Institute of the Handmaids of the Eucharist, and it is so much imprinted in her. Uh, the two important things that we always stress that we need especially now and at all times in the history of the church. What are, who are they? Of course, Jesus and Mary. Jesus, the Eucharist. We must never forget that the greatest sign of God's, of Jesus' presence in our midst at all times is the Eucharist. And the priests have to make that possible that the Eucharist is present at all times and in different places through the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, or we call the Mass. No? Eucharist is Jesus and Rosary is the Blessed Mother. They are not separate, as we, saw, we say in Our Lady of All Nations, the fact that uh, the Blessed Mother behind her is the cross of Jesus Christ indicates very clearly the close association between the mother and the child, the, the mother and the son. The son who is the son of God, who became a human being, who entered time through the most, virg most uh, the Immaculate Virgin Mary. They are ne never separated. And I think many things will be understood very well. Uh, theology will be able to explain that clearly if we start from the point of view that the mother and the son from the incarnation, even before the incarnation, because the Most Holy Mother was specially chosen, the purest virgin, specially chosen to be what she is in preparation for the salvific work of her son, the son of God who became human being through her. They are never separable. Anyway, Saint, uh, rather, uh, Sister Agnes Susagawa became a Catholic, Catholic Christian and, be, and dedicated her whole life in consecration as a, a member of the Institute of uh, the Handmaids of the Eucharist. No? Handmaid reminds us of the Blessed Mother, behold the Handmaid of the Lord and of the Eucharist. She is truly Handmaid of the Lord because of Jesus Christ. Anyway, it was not too long after she entered as a novice, no? a few months after that she had this special 
experiences, supernatural experiences. And uh, it happened, you know, this, similar to, to Sister Teresing, many probably are doubtful about her, uh, the apparitions of God, no? Because she was just a postulant, 21 years old. Sister Susagawa, Agnes Susagawa, was novice. I, uh, maybe she had very short time of postulancy. She was novice. A few months after, she had this experience. The difference between Sister Teresing and uh, Sister Agnes is that after this experience, which she was, Sister Agnes was very open, like Sister Teresing, as commander no, to the spiritual director, Sister Teresing as spiritual director, uh, Bishop Obiar, and uh, a priest was the spiritual director of, of uh, uh, Sister Agnes. Later on, she was very completely open to, the, to Bishop Ito, no, the bishop of the place. She was, she, she, she became as a nun, a full-fledged one. But you know, Sister Tilsing probably entered at the age of 21. Sister Agnes was almost 40, or maybe even 40, when she became novice of, the, of this congregation. Now, a few months after her entry and her wild information, she, when visiting the Blessed Sacrament, that is the very center of the Institute of Handmaids of the Eucharist, she noticed heavenly or spiritual creatures adoring the Blessed Sacrament. This is very important because during this time, one of the pains of the Blessed Mother and one of the offenses against the Lord Jesus is that many people do not believe anymore in the real presence. The Blessed Mother complains about that in many appearances during these times. Now, that uh, there are blasphemies and uh, outrages committed against the, the Lord, especially the unworthy reception of the Holy Communion and also the lack of faith even among religious, even among priests in the real presence of the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. So the appearances of the Blessed Mother, like, like in Fatima, the the angel, before the appearance of the Blessed Mother, brought uh, the Eucharist to the three children. The appearances of the Blessed Mother is always are always associated with faith in the real presence of her son, the Lord Jesus, who is the presence of God, who is God with us. Remember that. Uh, God with us, that is the name of Jesus, Emmanuel. And Jesus itself is God saving us. That means we being brought to the presence of God, to union with God. So since uh, Sister Agnes was in the Blessed Sacrament, she frequents that, that is the main apostolate and prayer of the congregation, of the institute. And one time she experienced that. And I, uh, one time the angel told her, come, do not be afraid. You will see many things. You pray hard, make sacrifices. And then at one point, Sister Agnes received the stigmata. She is considered a, a, the, the female counterpart of, a, of a Saint Padre Pio. She received stigmata. On Thursday, uh, she experiences pain in her palms, with the left palm. And then you will see on Friday, the form of cross, uh, the wound in her palms bleeding. Bleeding wound. And then, it will disappear on, on, on Sunday, the day of the Lord. Now, uh, during those experiences, which she tells, uh, because she is instructed to tell the superior, and the superior is not only the, the sisters who, who, who believe with her, begin to understand her, no? even she was a newly convert and newly a new member of the institute as a novice. She talked to the bishop. She was very open. And in the beginning, the bishop was saying, be careful, be cautious, because the church will be very slow in approving or recognizing such phenomenon. She will make sure that that is really from heaven. Anyway, the, 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 the sister, Sister Agnes, one time also, uh, in the, in the, because the, blessed, the, the, the supernatural experiences started in 1973 when she entered as novice and went as, as long as maybe 10 years, in 1984. The bishop recognized this phenomenon in 1986. No? 
uh, and, and, and uh, with the consultation of, uh, of uh, the Vatican, he, he explained what is happening, what he, he was told by the visionary. In any way, in any case, one time, uh, Sister Agnes saw the wooden statue in the chapel, which is the statue of Our Lady of Nations, but it is a wooden statue. Uh, she was also, she had also the, her hands blooded with stigmata, like hair. So. And she would be told how painful the feelings of the Blessed Mother when she, in these times, in our times, that is in the year 70s, so 80s, 90s, now, by the way, Sister Agnes already died some years ago, many years ago. And uh, what the Blessed Mother told her wa was the suffering that the Lord experiences because of the infidelity of people. Among those who are causing so much pain to the Sacred Heart, by the way, the congregation of Sister Agnes and she herself was a very great devotee of Sacred Heart. And in fact, because of the sufferings that she also endured through, because of the stigmata, she was told that uh, uh, she 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 would she should besides the devotion, her already devotion to the Sacred Heart, she should also pray the prayer of devotion to the precious blood, the blood uh, that flowed from her stigmata, stigmata in her hands, and from the hands of the Blessed Mother, that reminds us of the sufferings of Christ. That's why, you know, we always remember Mary suffered spiritually deep in her interior self, no? the sufferings of Jesus. She did not have the wounds clearly in her body, but the heart of the mother suffered immense agony because of the sufferings of her son. They are always together. And if the, the blessed Lord <coughs> suffered a lot, for the salvation of people on the cross, the mother suffered no less because she shared completely in the life and the sacrifice in the mission of her son. And saints are called to do that. In fact, the call to Sister Agnes is a call to all to make amendments for the suffering suffered by Jesus, particularly in these times. The, the Holy See accepted this, uh, uh, this so-called extraordinary phenomena in Akita, accepted the experience of this convert when she was already adult, who is Sister uh, Agnes Sagawa. But noticeable until now, there is a tendency to silence, to keep mum about all these happenings. Why? And this is true in many ap apparitions happening before and after Akita. Why is there so much uh, kind of tendency to silence the visionaries or silence the, ex the, the spread of the uh, manifestations of Blessed Mother? Because one of the things that the Blessed Mother said is not favorable for the church. In 1973, the first uh, experience of, Saint, of Sister Agnes, and even 1961 in Garabandal, even the, the what, what uh, Ida Perdeman in Amsterdam heard, and Ida Perdeman claimed to have uh, contact with the Blessed Mother, messages from her from 1945 until almost the 90s, near her death. No? Blessed Mother warns about things that happen, that is happening even in the church, including the infidelity of priests and consecrated people. This is already wa a warning that has come from the Blessed Mother. Even the four, 400 years ago in uh, Our Lady of Good Success in uh, Ecuador, Quito, Ecuador, uh, the revelation to Mother Mariana, these stories, they try to keep silent about this because it tells about many things that 
are not nice. In their times, until 1973, it was unthinkable to know that there will be, let's say, conflicts among cardinals, among bishops, among priests, infidelities in the theology, theological teachings, deviation from the practice of the church, which is a, a generations old, no? and real, you know, accommodate, accommodating to the world. That is happening. We, we see that very clearly now. It has come out in the open. Even the abuses, that was already told by the Blessed Mother generations ago, years ago, decades ago. And the church is a little bit worried about this coming out in the open. Now it came out in the open. We, we, it cannot be controlled anymore. But the Blessed Mother had warned us about it. So Akita is one of those apparitions that they tried to silence. Even now, in the, I think the pilgrimages to Akita is being discouraged. But it had been recognized not only by the late Bishop Ito, but also by the, the church before. Nevertheless, it is, and it is good for us why we are praying like this and reviewing, reflecting on the apparition of the Blessed Mother to really uh, reflect on what she, she has been saying all the time to different people. It is almost the same messages, the need for prayer, the need for penance, sacrifices, the need for uh, giving honor and homage our faith and we making time before the Blessed Sacrament, praying for the conversion of priests and consecrated people. It is all there. And then warnings of great uh, disasters that will happen to the world. In Akita, uh, Sister Agnes was told by the Blessed Mother about uh, another world, another war. And you know, for the Japanese, having experienced the atrocity of the atomic warfare, they dread, but they feel very strongly the, 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 fe the fear of a third world war. But it seems it is inevitable unless people will pray. That's why Akita's call, the call of the other apparitions, some of them not yet recognized by the church, no? but it is always the same warning us about uh, coming catastrophe, famine, that there will be fire coming from the sky that will that will eradicate many. You know, even the plague now has been mentioned in some maybe shaded uh, words, no? but it is referring to uh, uh, happening a, a great disease that will that will uh, bring death to millions of people. There will be more. That is the unfortunate thing, no? And I heard it many, many apparitions, in historical apparitions. The Blessed Mother warned about so many deaths, no? That there are more who die than those who, who remain. And the, the, the living will envy the dead. That is not just uh, expressed the Blessed Mother in the last decades. It is in the, in the book of Revelation. Many will be will wish that they were among the dead. What will happen in the future? That's why what we are experiencing now is not that probably the worst. It's not that we are looking forward to the worst happenings. It will not happen. You know, that is what the Blessed Mother warns us about. A warning is not say it will happen the way it is described. But if we pray, if we make sacrifices, if people will go back to God, will be converted, if we will turn away from our sins, then this will be avoided, all these catastrophes. That's why the call always of the Blessed Mother, it's always the same thing everywhere. Pray, pray the rosary. Pray for the conversion of sinners. Make amendments not only for your sins. This is what as Sister uh, Agnes was told. Your pain is meant for you not only to make reparation for your sins, but for the sins of others. Even in, the, in Fatima, that was told to the children. That's why the children who were practically sinless, they made a lot of sacrifices. They dedicated their very short lives, making penance for the sins of others. 
and they take that they took that very seriously because they were shown that many people go to hell because there is there are not enough people to pray and sacrifice for them even to sister agnes and to the other visionaries after fatima and even before that there is this plea for prayer for sacrifice it is always the same prayer of the rosary adoring, adoring the jesus and the blessed sacrament believing in him and the, the blessed mother is warned about so many desecration of the sacrament the incident in akita is a is together together with other apparitions particularly in uh, amsterdam and in in fatima always revealing the same thing what is beautiful in uh, akita no, the, is this the, is the uh, special mention of, of uh, by the way uh, the blessed mother shed tears of blood 101 times what is beautiful in that, this is interpreted by the spiritual director of, of Sister uh, Agnes, one who really believed and wrote uh, what happened in Akita, 101 times. And then it ended in, I think, in 1986. 101. What is the significance of 101? 101. The priest interpreted that as the one the first one refers to Eve because of one woman and therefore together with the one man sin and condemnation entered in the world because of another woman the second woman the second Eve is Mary forgiveness has come to the world and in between that zero is not zero does not mean nothing the zero is a representative of the eternal God, eternity. So, there is a reminder of Genesis, the, the, the word in Genesis, where God spoke to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman after the fall of the first Eve and Adam. I will put enmity between you, the serpent, the cause of the fall, and the woman. The woman who will give birth to a son between your seed and her seed. God intervenes through a woman. That's why it is from this basis, already very much spoken of in our Daily of All Nations since 1945, the, the idea and doctrine of co-redemption which is not very acceptable for the church for the time being. Even lately, we heard the Holy Father saying that we must not talk about co-redemptrix. Jesus is the only Redeemer. We have to acknowledge that. But we must also recognize the very intimate unity between Jesus the Redeemer and Mary that makes her there together all the time, even in suffering and in bringing back humanity to the graces of God, she is redemptrix. This is the message of Akita, this is the message of Fatima, this is the message of, of Amsterdam and others. So let us uh, try to know more about these appearances of the Blessed Mother. We'll have other things too, and uh, everything is pointing to that very intimate union. We must say perfect union, which God desires of himself and humanity that is already achieved in Jesus and Mary. So let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of all nations, pray for us. Our Lady mother of our lord jesus pray for us amen please subscribe please tell others share this uh, program with others tell them about this beautiful reflection we are praying together as the blessed mother asks let us continue to, ga to gather as many people as possible to pray and sacrifice for the conversion of sinners god bless you may almighty god bless you all the father the son and the holy spirit